Hey Westside and all those who are tuning in, we've been having the conversation uh, talking about the good news and how uh, we kind of just are anticipating it, waiting for it. Uh, and every time there is some, we celebrate these small glimmers of hope. At Westside, we've been specifically talking about how this season has provided us an opportunity to kind of see things with a new hope and a new clarity. Things that once seemed important to us uh, are now things that we uh, don't value as much. Things that we've put on the back burner earlier are now things that we cherish and, and value. We're at a crossroads, our lives have changed. Today, we're gonna to be talking about new paths and we're at a corn maze south of, of Winkler. Um, what would it take for you to become lost or disoriented? Some of you may not even attempt to do a corn maze because you know search and rescue would have to be called in to rescue you. Here we have all sorts of decisions, uh, opportunities to make choices and decisions and, and then to walk out the consequences of them. Lately, we've been talking about a lot about wishing things would go back to normal or wishing things could be how they were. We want normal back. We can go back the same direction we came or we can choose another way. We could potentially get even more lost than we were before. Or maybe the best option is we choose a path that leads us to somewhere new. In our lives, we're constantly making decisions. We live with this tension of, I wonder how this will play out. How will it affect us? In our faith, we do the same thing. Perhaps ending up in a place we never thought we'd be. Lost, cold, just wanting it to end. Wishing for someone to say, time's up, or come, I'll show you a way out. In Acts 9, we get the story of Saul, and, and he become quite critical of the church and of God's people, and he didn't understand he didn't understand them or why the movement was gaining popularity, so he tried to suppress it. His hate for them increased. Saul considered his role quite important for creating order. He was busy throwing Jesus' followers in jail. The way they lived was just too radical. They loved too much. These Christians weren't patriotic. They liked Jesus more than the country they lived in. They were selfless. They cared more about the needs of their neighbors and enemies than their own comfort. The way they lived was life altering to those who came in contact with them. This was definitely a rebellion to be stopped. Saul was on a bad path. Like Saul, we've all been in a, on a bad path, hard headed and stubborn, blinded by our own ideas and desires, selfish, addicted, and often clueless to the effects this has on us and the ones we love. It's on this path that we meet Saul lost, meandering his own way. He's on his way to creating tension, fear, and chaos among Jesus' followers when God finds him. Maybe we can't relate to the persecuting Christians part of Saul's journey, but I think we can all agree that at times we're lost and confused and we long for a Saul-like Jesus intervention. Over the last several months, we've had the conversation about what are the effects that COVID has had on us? We talked last week of the dross, uh, of the impurities in our lives that a season like this kind of burns off. Things we no longer value or have place in positions of importance. These last months have exposed those impurities or perhaps compounded them. We've made choices and taken paths in our responses. We've had the choice to look internally at how this season is positively shaping us or we react in criticism and skepticism. We've had the choice to look to the hope of Jesus or be consumed with the negativity of news and popular responses. What if the current regulations and restrictions actually are positively guiding the church into a new way of being his bride? We can't meet as large groups, so we begin to meet more in homes and small groups, developing close relationships and community. Less programs in church, so much more time for prayer and local mission less distracted, more focused. What if God is using COVID to shift and shape his church rather than seeing COVID as destroying it? Just like God didn't like the cross, he doesn't like COVID, but that doesn't stop him from using it. We're constantly being presented the choice to choose a path. We know ultimately what we want, 
We want Jesus and whatever path he would have for us. What might he be calling us to? About 25 years ago, Westside uh, Community Church was received this word of prophecy and it was given to them as found, it's a passage found in Isaiah 42, verse 16. I will lead blind Israel down a new path, guiding them along an unfamiliar way. I will brighten the darkness before them and smooth out the road ahead of them. Yes, I will indeed do these things. I will not forsake them. This word was given to Westside as we entered a new season here. One that was new for us and one that prioritized growth and intentional focus on family. This verse in Isaiah is a declaration of the way the world itself can begin praising God now for the things he's doing in the midst for his people in darkness. This passage in Isaiah speaks of God bringing his people out of darkness, leading them down a new path, a new way where their previous lives of bondage and darkness were left behind. And their new way is one of freedom and light, no longer stumbling around, but walking in confidence because we know where God is leading. We believe this word is still true of Westside today, that God is leading us down a new path, that he's walking before us, illuminating the darkness and smoothening out the road. So in the midst of this season, we remain hopeful and attentive to what, where God is leading. Saul's journey and this prophetic word have one thing in common. Wilderness survival fascinates me. Uh, Bear Grylls, Les Stroud, uh, Survivor Man. I've, I've watched most of their, their episodes. I've always thought it'd be so fun uh, to take some survival courses, uh, sleep outside in winter, all that kind of stuff, to build a shelter and try to survive. I don't think the sentiment would stay uh, if it was a matter of life or death, but there's something exciting about it. I also love maps. I love studying them and learning about local attractions or sites that are uncommon to the area. I love trails. My Google Maps is full of little pins dropped here and there of places I've been, places I want to go. All of these interests are nothing more than that. So I don't know how well I would fare if I were to actually get lost. But I doubt that will happen as I know exactly where I'm going all the time. There are some common ways that you can gain direction when you're lost. If you have a compass, that makes things easier. The knowledge that moss can grow on the north side of some trees. People have also been using the North Star to guide them. And there's also a common belief and understanding that the sun rises in the east. Some of you may have a strong internal compass. With an internal compass, you always have an idea, something deep inside you that always knows which way is out or back. Something inside directing you back to the path you were on. I think it's important for us to be in tune with our spiritual internal compass as well. And there are a couple great reminders biblically of where our spiritual compass should point. If you don't want to be misled, if we want to know what is right and true, if we want to experience life and purpose and intention, we're going to find that in Jesus. John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is so important for us in this very hostile climate where everything is polarized to have Jesus as our true north. It's easy to become distracted and worked up in politics or in COVID regulations and guidelines or social issues. However, Jesus is telling us, look to me. With the amount of opinions that we can find on every issue under the sun, we can become emotionally invested and burnt out quite quickly. Jesus invites us to another way. Come to me, let me guide you. I am the way, the truth, the life. David comes to a similar conclusion in Psalm 119, 105, where he writes, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A great reminder for us to be firmly planted in Jesus and his word. God is illuminating our steps and leading us on. Are we focused on him? Are our hearts aligned with his? Are his priorities ours? What we have before us is an opportunity. While we like what we had before, we believe that God has something better for us as well. With God, our best days are ahead. Now the opportunity will always be there to take another route, to go our own way. 
another selfish detour that potentially leads us nowhere. But when our hearts are set on Jesus, knowing our direction and our identity, we stand much less danger of getting lost. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for how you've made it a way. You've made, um, you're just pointing us in, in giving us your word to point us in the right direction. So we thank you for the opportunity that we're at as a church, as a, as a community, and as a world um, to, to make the choice to walk towards you, um, to not get distracted or um, become disillusioned by something, but that we can be drawn into you and, and to your way. And so Jesus, would you become our focus and our priority? Um, we look to you as the way, and we just thank you for how you walk with us each day, um, opening up and illuminating and guiding us and leading us in whatever that might be. And so we are here, we're listening, Father, as you speak. And, and God, we ask that you continue to guide us and lead us. Amen. Amen.